when the Kurdish forces took over, they were actually, there were people from the administration, from the Syrian government, in, uh, let's say, in the town hall building, and they were, uh, uh, and they were trying to run away in terms of trying, you know, and they thought the Kurds were an enemy force. So in that moment, the Kurds said, but why are you running away? We are now running a democratic government here. Why don't you join us? Now, I think this is quite a significant kind of incident, because what, is, what they are trying to do is, is actually win the people who are working with the government on their side. So this is quite a very different outlook then some people say, well, everybody who works for the government is immediately part of the government. Mm, exactly. Now, they are trying to do the opposite. They are trying to democratize. Mm. They are not looking at this stage for an enemy. They are trying to actually use the forces mm. and to strengthen their experiment. Mm. It's a method of working. It's a method. It's an idea. It's an a, idea that they are implementing with the other peoples. If we are talking about Arab, Christian, and all these other minorities, there is a basis, a cultural and social basis in the region to build this experiment. This is number one. And this is a very important theoretical kind of analysis that the movement has done for 30, well, I mean, since 19, 1999, definitely. The movement has changed, you know, not just Ocalan, but everybody involved who was involved in the theoretical discussions of what were the mistakes for, uh, uh, within the Kurdish movement, and in particular the PKK, from 1974 to 1999. So the whole discussion is preceded by the struggle and an ongoing theoretical discussion. So this point in time, I would say, if you are saying a final kind of document, of course it's not a final document. The, the social charter was developed in a war situation. I mean, where are we living? What are we talking about? It's a very lengthy document with a lot of problematic sections. Yeah, well, you can put your criticism in writing. Do it, but first of all, <laughs> read the document. <laughs> well, then please uh, put your analysis. Anyway, <clears throat> all what I'm saying is, it's very important, and I haven't been in the area, but I'm watching the situation through people who are coming and going, including Kurdish people, and it was quite obvious that this little incident, which I was told one year ago, has actually helped to change the situation that this guy who ran away is now actually part of a team that is running part of the administration in one little village. So I'm not, it's just how this works is quite amazing. And as I said, the fact is that they are trying to expand this into the whole of Syria and trying to win these people in Raqqa and elsewhere by this kind of method of working and include, being inclusive, uh, you know, and trying to involve them in the village, uh, you know, whatever the community is left. And there is the condition to do that. And that is why the opposition doesn't like that. Because what does the opposition really think? The opposition wants to have another state in power. The state is the question here. Now, that is why I am hopeful that the Kurds will do it. Because the question, the whole issue of a nation state. And they are saying, we can build a democratic Syria from below if we are fighting for this. And everybody opposed this. The Assad regime, that's why I'm saying Assad is not going to say autonomy. That's not what the Kurds want. We are not talking about cantons. We are talking about, you know, the expansion of the model of democratic autonomy in the whole of Syria and the region. 
That's what the Kurds are fighting for in Rojava. I'm not they saying not they don't about, want it. I'm, you know, I'm they, not they saying they don't want, want it. Rojava. I'm saying if Assad coming back, changing him, his mind, might, might happy with the autonomy, but I know that the Kurdish people are not happy with that anymore. No, no, no. But you see, we haven't got the bloody understanding what autonomy our friend here compared it with Switzerland. That's rubbish. They're not looking at Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I mean, anyway, it's no model. No model. Because everybody's for a nation state in the end. Even the left. What are they proposing? Which left? Well, that's the question. <laughs> but what are they proposing? They are proposing nothing else but another nation state, another regime. Why, why is the FSA and the Turkish <coughs> government and everybody opposed to, uh, uh, to Rojava and is trying to destroy it? Can basically. we hear some other questions, please? Did you have a question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'd like, really like to hear more concretely about this bottom-up organization in particular. Um, David's mentioned the, the mixed sex councils and then these all women yeah. councils with vetoes. Do we have examples where these vetoes are actually put oh, into yeah. operation and what sorts of examples? Just say, just to be a you know, real devil's advocate, seeing this film, okay, so lots of very exciting, very interesting, amazing film, but we could be reading it as one bunch of patriarchs and another bunch of patriarchs <laughs> fighting over land and resources and usual stories. Um, uh, all right, the jihad is the worst bunch of patriarchs in history. <laughs> but we, we remember Kurdish, you know, civilization is still one of the most intensively patriarchal cultures there are. Um, what is the reality? We are looking at these women fighters and you know, amazing women and so forth. I had a little experience of going to talk with uh, in a large conference of PKK women back in Germany about uh, back at the, about nine months ago, where I learned a bit about Rojava and I was amazed and excited by the extraordinary energy that the women had um, describing and discussing the experiences of Rojava. And nevertheless, you, you think, well, if this is feminist theory by dictat of Ocalan, what, what is the situation, do you think? To um, be honest, I, I, when I was there, um, in, when it comes to making decision, absolutely they, 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 have, they have absolute power about making decisions the women. I mean, they have more power than the women here when they make a decision whether within the family, whether at work, whether in the party, you know. And I have seen them, and I went to, uh, to, to, to their meeting, uh, and, uh, and I saw their power, I saw their determination, I saw their toughness, um, you know, and I, I've been in a couple of meetings um, in, in, in Kamishli, uh, uh, in commune group, which is uh, both of them, the majority, they, uh, they were women, and they, the majority of them, they, they were young. Uh, I mean, um, one thing is, is uh, just to, uh, to be sure about that, I think, which is, I mean, is, is if, it, if you go into a deep, deep conversation, I'm a slight, con have, I have a slight concern about that. But while, that, that's the point I wanted to say, while Abdullah, Abdullah Ojalan and, the, and some of the other leaders, they are really, really, they believe in equality between women and men in a, to, to a level, and women, can, women there has been, been sacred. It's not just equal to man and woman. There is nobody can say anything is about woman. There, you can say anything is about men, but you cannot say anything is about woman. You know, and they are so, they, they, they stand up for their right. So, they, they, while while the they, they, they leaders, well, the leader of PKK or PID, they believe in that. The other people, the other people, they cannot ignore woman's uh, decision or women's opinion, women's power, whether they like it or not. I'm not saying, I'm not saying PYD, PYD or PKK, they are an anarchist organization or anarchist um, group or whatever. I'm still, I cannot say that Tiabdam is an anarchist organization, but I believe the tendency of anarchism in the Tiabdam is, is very high because I saw many of them 
uh, even one of them was uh, the, the in the diplomatic uh, uh, relation with the foreign country. This, the, he wa she was the second. Uh, Camila? She, hmm? Camila? Uh, no, um, her name. Uh, I tell you the name. I tell you the name. Let me just. Uh, Khadija. Oh, okay. Khadija. Um, and uh, when I asked them, many of them they say they are not actually the member of of PYD. They are not a member of PKK yeah. at all. And they told me frankly, they do not believe in political party. They don't believe in politics. They do not believe in changing just the the political system. They believe in social revolution. Revolution, and when I was in the uh, they, they, they meeting in the commune with them, I asked them personally, and not many of them actually lifted their dead hand or their finger, say uh, I belong or she belong or he belong to a political party, which is, is a good for me. It's a it's a it's a good sign because as long as you you kick the politics, if you kick the political party, that means we take in the right direction. That means we do not. Uh, uh, you do not want just to change the system. You, uh, the, the, the political power, you want to change the system. May, may I address the thing about gender, though? Um, I mean, like, of course you're skeptical because, you know, it seems like it's an ideology coming from above, but it's, it's not. It's, it, there, there's a dialectic between the leadership and what pressure from below that's like defined the thing from the beginning. Um, and, you know, um, and, and they're building on existing tendencies within a really complex and contradictory situation. I mean, Kurdish female fighters have existed for a long time. So there's something there to take and institutionalize. But you can take that tradition and use it to validate, you know, creating actual coercive force behind feminist organizations, which basically doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and that was a conventional strategy. I mean, and, and just, I mean, you just have to go. Um, if you go there, you know, you realize immediately this is not what the front. Um, you're in Iraqi Kurdistan, and you know it's like all men on the street and men hanging out, and women are you know mostly covered hanging up along behind people. You know it's just like, and then you just like cross the river, and like there's eight women photographing you and running up and meeting you and arranging things, and it's like, and then you know, you can just tell this is this is for real, yeah. Um, and most of the people we talk to are women, actually. I mean, who are like the the, I mean it's all co-present, so in theory it's 50-50 and everything. But you know the ones who seem to take the initiative often. Um, yes. um, Do you think yeah. that this is just because it's a war situation, and that like in this country in the Second World War, suddenly women had lots of men's jobs and they were allowed to keep them, they were allowed to have equality in factories, etc., until the war was won. So is it not just a shortage of gun firing capacity? They actually need more people shooting the guns. Um, I, I think I think they need they they. they People, not they need the people to um, uh, to carry a gun, but people needed to carry a gun because okay. I mean I personally, if I was there, and even if the age helped me, I would go there in Kobani and fought, uh, uh, and fought again. It's the the darkest uh, power, the darkest force in the world. I mean, you, you, it's nothing. I mean, to do whether you want to or not. We are you have a desire. To, to do uh, to kill people or to be killed or to to join the fighting it's just something you are forced it you've been forced it but under such extreme circumstances wouldn't that generate equality well yeah, there's I mean there is a ten well, it doesn't do it everywhere I mean it is true where you have some sort of like tradition of gender equality to build on it can you, there's a, a very familiar thing that happens where women are mobilized during wartime and then as soon as the war's over, it's like, go back to the kitchen. Right, exactly. and, 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 and it's very true that everyone in Rojava is keenly aware of that history and, and people would refer to it specifically. They're saying, we want to create institutions which will make sure that does not happen when this ends. Um, you know, it's very self-conscious. Um, we're, we need to make this, you know, we have this opportunity to do a women's revolution we we'll never be able to get away with. And in a way, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, certain issues clearly seem to be postponed. Like, yeah. you know, like sexual revolution. You know, the, the people in the women's, like in men's forces aren't supposed to have sex while they're in the military, militias can't. Uh, but, but, you know, they're, they're kind of putting off all those questions, but the first thing is like, demonstrate to everyone, the way they put it is like, 
you know, it used to be like women are people whose honor needs to be protected. We're going to prove that women are people who can protect other people's honor. Um, so they have these women out, <laughs> you know, out there with guns protecting the honor of the community. Protecting and the men's honor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's and they talk about it that way. Um, and and you're using that as a wedge to like, you know, make twenty you know, fifty years of social progress we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And it's very, very self conscious. So, so I've got now I've got about like eight or nine people that are speaking with some of us and go but there's two gentlemen that are gonna be waiting for quite some time. So one, two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. So it's one, two, three. I think my question is going to be quite quick. Um, it's got two slightly tangential elements, and I'm, I'm interested in links between ethics and aesthetics and identity. Oh, brilliant. And so, um, my question is about the role of music, because there's this uh, song, Rojava March, that you may um, have come across. And I so it would be great to know your, your experiences on, on that. And also, uh, so thinking about that, language um, is Kurdish. Um, Presumably, the social chart was written in, in Kurdish, um, but then there's a lot of non Kurds uh, involved in whatever. So, what role does, does Kurdish play in terms of to, to non Kurds, you know, in terms of them speaking um, Kurdish and, like, and the, the role that plays in, in potentially in, in, in bonding people as, as, a, as a language of the region or, or what? Um, so, so, yeah, those, those issues there with, with uh, the, the, sort of the social revolution, so the, the aesthetic elements to that really interesting and how that all ties together with the identity of what's, what's going on and the language being part of that. Uh, ethics and aesthetics, I was at a women's academy where they explained that they're developing what they call the new discipline of gynology, J-I-N-O-L-O-G-Y, um, which is like they think goes beyond feminism, the, 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 to use feminism as a base, base for the universal critique of the of, uh, modernist subject, and part of their principles is to explode the difference between ethics and aesthetics by demonstrating that beauty and freedom are the same thing. And have you come across that song then, the, the Java March? Yeah, should we sing it? <laughs> yes, <Yeah, should> everyone <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do they sing that in Rojava? They sing, but unfortunately, most of that uh, song at the moment is anthem song rather than uh, love or other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what other question on the language? Because that was quite interesting. Yeah, in terms of um, is the, the the Kurdish dialect of um, is that uh, the Manji, yeah. Yeah, is that Ooh, universally cool. spoken in the area, or is it? Um, uh, yeah, but at the moment, uh, three languages has been recognized that has officially is been uh, studying uh, um, in 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 all the um, um, administration and also the school, Kurdish, Arabic, and Syrian. Uh -huh. Yeah, three of them equally. Yeah, and they're having to redo the curriculum, and it's very complicated. You yeah. know, by Basically, it works differently by village or by community, depending on the language mix, what they teach, math, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, my question was about uh, there's been reference to the theoretical debates and the sort of um, the desire, the gra a grassroots desire for a social revolution. And I guess I'd just like to hear a bit more about the sort of historical seeds of that grassroots desire for a social revolution and where did they come from? Because yeah, it can seem when you're looking in from the outside that there was this uh, Ocelone conversion and then somehow it happened, but it, it seems that doesn't seem to sit well. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's true, so I just wondered what people's thoughts were on that. Um. You could probably come back to it in the second session unless either of you had something quickly to say about it. Or I, I, I haven't finished my um, no, policy, no, no policy of no word and nothing, but before I, I go back to that. Um, you know, sometimes people doing the thing is uh, without calling it, whether they don't want to call it or whether they don't know that. I mean, uh, when when I see when I saw people in uh, in Syrian Kurdistan, they said you are anti-state, you are anti-power, you are anti-authority, but 
I'm sure many of them, they have probably they have never ever heard about uh, libertarian or annexed uh, movement or annexed idea, you know. But, but people saying these sort of things, again, I mean, when it comes to other things, like what you say, um, sorry, I can't just, I forgot what you, what was your question for the last? My question is really about the sort of right. historical right. seeds of this desire for a grassroots revolution as opposed mm. to... Yeah, yeah, that's right. So when it comes back, I didn't see, I didn't see many people, I saw people, but I didn't see many people too talking about the, the, the social revolution, but the, the route they, they took it, the way they, they, they started by building local groups and working in every aspect of the of the society and working on every single <coughs> problem in the society from women, from trade, from uh, for instance economic, from education, from culture, from even reconciling between the, uh, mm -hmm. the families, reconciling between the, the faction and, um, and, and uh, working on the support and solidarity with other group and other partner. They, they do not call it social revolution. They do not call it, but I call it social revolution because they any, yeah, because any <laughs> groups is working on that. I mean, if the revolution coming down, that's how I use it, coming down to the ground, involved in every single problem in the society, that is for me, that is for me, that is the social revolution. So. This is interesting. When were you there? Because now they talk about revolution all the time. Everybody I talk to is like the revolution, the before the revolution, after the revolution. Um, why don't people recognize the revolution? That, yeah, the language is maybe that since they set up the academies, which is a relatively new thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, just uh, jump there. Thank you. Well, I am the additional from Northern Just uh, I heard uh, a lot, or I read a lot about how these are extremely uh, patriarchal Kurdish society have female gender. So, well, I can understand you when you ask this question because you are living outside of Kurdistan. So, uh, and it seems suddenly guerrilla women happen. Number one, uh, female guerrilla last 30 years in the mountain and they are fighting. So 30 years is quite long time. Uh, lifetime. <laughs> I am, as a Kurdish woman, 53 years old. And in my lifetime, I know, last at least 50 years, Kurdish woman has discussion and practice about this equality and liberation. As lots of, uh, I can't say, groups going on in Kurdistan now. And many things going on. Uh, one side in the mountains, another side in the uh, city of Kurdistan or Finnish, etc. So, and I remember uh, a couple of days ago I went to Kurdistan in the village. Uh, we were, uh, somebody introduced me. Right? She said uh, she is uh, this man's wife and she just uh, refused. He said, I have name. You know, this is so good. She has name, of course, and she demand, we demand, I mean. So, uh, maybe reading or talking with Kurdish woman helps you about this question. Secondly, we are just like any any other society, just patriarchal society. And we are fighting against it. We are not up extremely <laughs> something, anyway. So we are just human beings, and anyway, sometimes I, I feel to say that. When people see uh, female guerrilla and lots of questions going on around, and I heard really some some of them quite uh, uncomfortable questions. Anyway, so secondly about Rojava, uh, I, I all my heart I support Rojava, of course, but not their uh, their fighting, too, but uh, not their autonomy or etc. Because always I've been uh, pro-independent Kurdistan. Pro-independent Kurdistan is not simplistically nationalist. We want to our own government. We want to uh, govern ourselves. For example, I never ever want <coughs> the Turkish government 
government go to Turkish embassy to take their identity, etc., etc. Being state is a whole issue. So I don't want to that one. I want to Kurdistan, my government, my identity, my passport, etc., etc. And uh, I will fight that for democracy. This is like you fight for democracy in Britain. So in this world, when everybody agree, all state agree, say we are demolished, demolish this national state, mm -hmm. but we will demolish. Why poor Kurds yeah. haven't <laughs> got state and everybody has state? It is so unfair. Whatever, whichever uh, ideology you look at this issue, it's not equal, it's not fair. So, and that's why I will not agree with autonomy decision. What is mean autonomy? It's mm -hmm. still a real state uh, as such government. So it is not big change. Anyway, thank you. Was a contribution or a, a question? <laughs> I have just a quick question, maybe it will also help clarify to some people regarding the institutions that will prevent power consolidation. Um, in the past year, Malagel and Malijin have been very, I've been told, powerful. The neighborhood houses, both for, they said, for like organizational, they had separate ones for women and men. Uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I don't know. Malagel and Malijin. I'm not sure, what are these ones? Um, they said they were neighborhood houses for organizations. Oh, well, they have women's houses, but yeah. Oh, I, I guess these must be the where they have the um, their councils. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, and, yeah. And if those still hold that sort of radical power, in the previous meeting, the person from PYB okay. talked about how they uh, did these kind of like, uh, the, I don't know what to say, but they would go around houses and basically help people have political subjectivity and talk about women's issues and such to build, build kind of horizontal and, uh, and fight with their problems. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're local like centers, which is also where they hold the assemblies. So there's a point. And there are women's houses, but the women's houses are different because, for example, they like shelf, you know, they're, they're both places anybody can, woman can run away from their family if they're having a problem and, and, and general support. Um, so people actually live there. Um, I, I'm being honest, I wasn't happy about the the meeting when PYD, the Democratic Union Party, and PKK, well, not PKK, but PKK obviously behind that, have been uh, with the United States uh, envoy or the Western country. Because, that, anyway, that's a, a, a long, long discussion about that. But uh, coming back to internationally, I mean, internationally, they, 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 they have a support. I mean, I can see, uh, uh, leftist, Marxist, anarchist, libertarian, all these people basically in everywhere. There was a demonstration, especially in the beginning, uh, and there was a protest again at that, and, and again there was a, and still there has been donation towards the refugees, uh, uh, either from Shanghai or, uh, or from uh, Kobani, or um, to people, uh, to Kurdish people there. So. And in terms of fighting, and you can see individual people going to join the, um, the Kurdish forces in Kobani from, from Israel, from Canada, from here, from there. But, the, but obviously it's coming to, um, to very a few people, if you compare it between the people is going from the Western country or the Arab country to support the ISIS or mm -hmm. the terrorist group. And, uh, about 20 currently. Volunteers, international volunteers, uh, about 20 currently. Yeah, yeah, it's a voluntary, but there is some uh, mercenary. Mm -hmm. the, the people who join ISIS is not, well, oh, because they, not big, yeah. well, it's a, some sort of mercenary, because it's some sort of, they have a, some hope uh, for well, the share of the spoil. Uh, yeah. Heaven and, and also <laughs> and also they get some of they get they, they get a salary monthly good salary yeah. they get a four hundred between four hundred and seven hundred dollar while you can see those people in uh, fighting in Kobani and anywhere else they don't get at all any penny and so they, they are voluntarily that's why I'm calling them they are mercenary but the people is fighting against them they are they they, they fight for freedom for humanity. So best ways to support, and did you meet any volunteers? Yeah, it, there are some people, it's very hard. 
because first of all, it's hard because the PKK is listed as a terrorist organization, so you can't give any money to anybody directly to that. You, um, like in terms of support, there is a border open now. Um, there's like one bridge where stuff is moving back and forth. So in terms of support, I think the most desperately needed things right now are equipment, like medical equipment and medicine, um, support of uh, Kurdish Red Crescent. It's like they get stuff in there. I saw, um, you know, so if you have like hypertension or diabetes, like that's the only way people can get medicine is through that kind of stuff. Um, so that just in terms of basically keeping people alive. But in, in the longer term, they want links of all sorts of types with radical organizations. Um, when I was at the university, for example, was, they don't want to call it a university, so it's the Academy of Mesopotamia, it's a sort of <laughs> sociology, history, you know, philosophy place. Um, those guys, you know, want to link up to anybody they can possibly, you know, link up with who is, you know, also revolutionary. Um, and, and, and that's the thing, they, they want to find people doing the same kind of thing internationally and create a kind of international coalition, but they don't know how to go about it. I mean, you know, um, I mean, there's major language problems for one thing, you know, I don't think anybody at that academy speaks English, you know, um, or any, you know, if there's some German speakers. Um, but, you know, these people that are, you know, you know, Kurdish, you know, Arabic, and you know, Turkish, you already got three languages. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and to be educated, so 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 it's 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 hard um, to do that kind of linking up, but they really want it. Um, so I think in every specific area, whether you're talking about education, whether you're talking about medicine, whether you're talking about um, you know, ec general economic support. There's autonomous institutions which would love to link up, but they're not allowed, and, and, and it's a legal situation. For example, there was like all these Yazidi refugees um, that, because the only people who really um, intervened to get the people out of Mount Sinjar were the YPG and the PKK. So they end up here, but like they can't get anything even from the UN, because the UN says, no, sorry, we gotta go through the Syrian government. This is still mm -hmm. technically part of Syria. Yes. You know, they got tents, but that's it. Where are they? They're they're right over the border in in, in, in Turkey. In, uh, no, they're 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 in Russia. So it's about the money problem. <laughs> is it their problem to send money or? or I'm not sure how you do it. Um, the YPG. Is that what you said? Because they're PKK. Right. You can't. Yeah. Because PKK, you can't give anything to because but they're a terrorist YPG. organization. YPG, you can. But I'm not sure how you'd go about it. Um, I mean, it's legal, but it, it's, it's legal, it's but like that, it's not clear how you do because there's no, you know, there's no banking system that like covers the both areas. There's well, like, did you take money out when you were there? No. Oh, right. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. This is an autonomous region. They're out of the. They're, they're off the grid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You can take the money out from you know the airport you came from and taking it to them. Well, I came there. through Iraq. I mean, um, yeah. you no. I mean, we had Iraqi dinners from Iraq, and they, you know they're still using Syrian money. Oh. But, yeah. <laughs> 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 No, it was just about the money. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, there, there you go. go. Please, please tell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 quite uh, I know. Uh, but this is information about where the money is. Yeah. Really, really yeah, it's only brief. I mean. If, if people want to ask me, there's Kurdish organizations in Europe, there's one in the UK here, have a saw the Kurdistan where you can get uh, where you can get information how you can actually get money over there. Right? We know that uh, there are ways and means through the Turkish, so North Kurdistan, but there are also ways and means to get it directly. And there are the organizations down there who have links with Europe and so to make it uh, safe. So it goes through Europe. So the uh, PKK terrorism law is, is a big problem for everybody in Europe, for us as well, who are working in support for the Kurds, by the way. Yeah, that's an important issue. They've been waiting a long time. You're the last question. Um, hi, uh, my name is Jasim. I am an activist from South Kurdistan, from Iraq, part of Kurdistan. Uh, basically, I, I, I am going to, you know, briefly, I have a few points to add to the conversation here, and I hope uh, maybe the kind of direction we take is to support Kobani with, uh, with, you know, with no conditions, because that's what we need at the moment. Um, basically, I, I have evidence um, uh, the political 
changed in that area. And we now, uh, we're coming from the area that the structure, the social structure is very, very tough and very fundamental. We cannot uh, expect a miracle in that area to happen, in, especially in Quran, and say that they're going to be a model of this, uh, everything is going to be fine, everything is going to be this and that. We have to be very realistic. We're talking about an issue that, you know, the, you know, that area, especially about the, you know, the women right, about the constitution, everything, there are a lot of area, great area for the discussion and to, for the conversation street for us that um, has to be developed and has to be uh, clarified as well. Conditional things or any condition or anybody, we support uh, Rojava and the person. At the moment, we do not know the future, what will be happening. That's the thing. The second thing is, be honest, comrade. I mean, I blame ourselves why our movement in uh, um, uh, in Europe, in the uh, United States, in anywhere else, people do not support it. I agree with you, not many many Anarchist people are supporting the, our movement. I, that's no doubt about that. But uh, us, as a Kurdish people, we, we are we, 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 we are a problem because fair thing is we, we do not recognize, we do not actually work on that, the, 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 the Rojava or the movement there, to be known by the people here. If people like me, you, you are a Kurdish, and we are not uh, know, knowing a lot about Rojava, and putting in writing, and going to the meeting, and, uh, and going to uh, to meeting of other people, and solidarity with the people here, basically, how can people be aware, people here, uh, southern miles far from here, from there, and also um, in terms of culture, they don't know what's happened there. And the third thing is their reason, again, is ours. The reason why, because when we do a um, demonstration here, um, we think it's our demonstration or our protest in support of Kobani or support of Rojava, but we don't. We, we, we do that. We, 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 are, we are ourselves under the person sure that's it. But when people is going, passing by us, the stranger, they don't think that is that demon because we what we're doing, we put we put up Kurdusan Kurdusan. Okay. We put up Ojalan's picture photo on the top. We put I'm up sorry. many slogan there. So that slogan, that, that what people think about when we see Ojalan, they think it's this guy has been executed. Yeah? They think it's they think solid, that this guy, they think they think this guy is a very strange, so that's why people, we do, not, we do not go to megaphone, we do not go to people to talk about, we do not, for instance, um, put in some slogan or some, uh, basically some banner to, to show the solidarity, to show the solidarity with people, or, or at least to bring the sympathy of the passer by us to us. So it's up to us, because we're still doing the demonstration in the way what we're doing in Iraq and in Syria, which is just wrong. We have to change our, we have to change our way. We have to, we have to find the way how, how, how recognize, um, how introduce our case to people here, mm. how to uh, to be attractive to them, how to bring the people sympathy and support and solidarity to us. That's what we needed to do. In the way we're doing it, I, I, I actually um, spoken to QID about this, I've spoken to Tebnova, and we as an Anarch, uh, Kurdish Anarchs Forum, we wrote a letter to them, and one of the uh, point we mentioned that, that is wrong. The demonstration we're doing it is wrong here. We didn't have any Ochala flags. We, there were comrades in the Shabbat said, and on the board said they saw it on TV there. We failed the can can, and they were very, very thankful. Sad boy, yeah. And I was saying, too, the, the slogan was Turkey, stop supporting ISIS. Yeah. That's been the main slogan in the demonstrations around Trafalgar Square and at this uh, Chamber of Commerce. So, so, wait, all right, time out, comrades.